Okay, we're going to go ahead and call to order the uh, May the 29th, 2014 Public Safety Committee to order, and I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of last month. So moved. Got a motion. Is there a second? And a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. First on the agenda tonight is the OSHA report. Good afternoon. How are you doing today? Doing well, thank you. I'd like to report for the month of April that we had a total of 16 injuries requiring medical attention. And you'll notice from the reports, you'll see where those different uh, injuries occurred or what type of injuries they were. That brings the total for the year to date to 71. Of those 71, 39 of them were classified as recordable by OSHA. 28 of them had restricted days. There were eight with lost claim days and three others. And as you look at the next page of your report, you'll see how this year stacks up with the two previous years. Uh, so far this year, as I said, we had 71. Last year at this time, we had 67 and the previous year, 61. And while we are up slightly, I'd just like to let you know that those injuries are not as severe as what they have been in the previous years. And you'll see that when we get to the uh, dollars incurred. On the next page, you'll see that the total incurred dollars for those 16 injuries were a little over $26,000 at $26,343. The Board of Education had 12 injuries, and the total dollars incurred for them were $19,200. The County General had the other four with $7,143. And then on the next page of your report, you'll see where those were in the county general with the Sheriff's Department, Ambulance Service, and Drug Court. So, total four. Last page of your report, you'll notice where it talks about, and I was telling you about the dollars incurred. Just to kind of take note, in 2012, this same time last year, or er, in 2012 to this year, our total dollars incurred were 202000 Last year at this time, we would have had 145,000. We're at 106,000 now. So while we may be up only a few claims, the dollars right now are, are considerably lower than what they were last year at this time. Is that based on just the seriousness of the accident? Based on the seriousness of the accident, because the incurred dollars is assuming what it will cost to close that claim out. And because they're not as severe, the dollar <coughs> estimated to close that claim out is less. So we're down right now as far as that's concerned. Of course, like anything, I always remind you until those dollars mature over about six months to a year, it's kind of difficult. So, uh, but we are looking good right this time. Well, I think that shows that the, the employees are actually looking at prevention and, and, and the serious, you know, accidents and stuff like that. So that sounds good. Yes, sir. And and keeping out there, and I just remind everybody whenever you're talking to somebody or, or in some place, always talk about safety. Look towards safety. Uh, address safety with somebody in some way because as long as people keep thinking safety, then the things that they haven't seen in the past will start paying attention to or look at in a different way, and that brings people mind back to safety and they watch where they're walking and see what they're doing, things like that. So, uh, one more thing on your last graph there, mm -hmm. you said the 202,000, but it's had basically two years. To yeah, most of those are all closed out. They're completely closed out. We don't know what this going to happen with these. And They're only four months old. Yes, sir. And that's why I say right now there could still be something. That, for example, somebody who has fallen on a knee and had their knee injured, uh, and the doctors right now think, of course, that's just a contusion, it'll be okay, could obviously go wild and somebody get a knee replacement, then you can obviously see that with Scott. But, of course, right now that's not expected. So, But I always caught, that's why I caution, please understand those dollars could change. But they have been, the severity that I see is not there. Okay. Make a motion to approve the report. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Got a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. I do have one other thing I'd just like to bring up and just mention to you. The county received an unannounced TOSHA inspection. Tennessee OSHA came in. They did this on May 20th. Uh, they looked at our records in the uh, risk management office records I maintain. 
uh, when I report to you as far as the OSHA recordables and things like that. They've looked at those for the last three years. Um, they've also went out to the county maintenance and they went out to pause. And since it was on the 20th, I have not gotten that report back yet. I believe that report is going to be good, everything's there, but until I get the report in hand, I really can't comment on the report other than tell you they were here on the 20th. So did they verbally tell you anything before they left? They, they passed a few things to me. Uh, they had, uh, we had in pause, we had a little bit of storage in an electrical room. Uh, nothing much, it's just a matter of moving it out. In uh, maintenance, and uh, maintenance is one of those places where they always look at themselves last. They had a, in an electrical box, they had one of the knockouts missing. They found that. Um, in the, uh, another room, they had the electrical plate cover off of the uh, electrical box. They had a trip hazard in that they had a long pipe. It must have been 18 feet long laying in the hallway. And of course, you had to step over it to go into a room. And it was just laying in the hallway of the maintenance shop while they were working on that. So that classified as a trip hazard. Um, some warning signs were missing. They looked for something like welding and wood dust. And the only last thing they had, we had a, a drop cord from the ceiling in there that was being used to plug in, but it was just a drop cord. It really wasn't uh, uh, in a uh, conduit or anything. And I got a call back from them saying that that really should have been in conduit. And that's all the comments that I got. And if it's being used for permanent wiring, it should be. But if, it's, if, if, it's, it's, if it's not, it could be temporary. That's right. And right then, when asked, it had just been done recently, but the question is how long before they pull it out? And so either we need to pull it out or put it in. And that's what we'll respond back to when we get the report. Yeah. And I usually get the report within 30 days, so it'll be probably at the next meeting. Hopefully, I'll be able to comment on those. All right, appreciate it. Anything else? That's all I have. All right, thank you. Thank you. Question is the county maintenance your meetings on Memorial? Yes, sir. Okay. Under uh, Ben Macon. Now, unfortunately, yeah. Mr. Macon was out at the time and wasn't there, so, uh, and I haven't had a chance to speak to him about it just simply because I hate to say things to somebody and tell them what the, when you don't have anything other than just comments. and. Uh -huh. When you get the report back, then it'll be something we can address. When was the last OSHA inspection or post inspection they had? Prior to this, uh, at the first of the year, if you'll remember, I came in and told you that they wanted to, uh, there was a uh, comment and they wanted to go out and view the landfill. And we went out and did the landfill in uh, January, I think, January, February. And prior to that, it was probably January of the year before that. So they come two every year. year. Once a year, about every uh, 12 to 18 months, we're on that cycle. But I think the, the first one was a, was a complaint. The last one was, yes. And the, the one, this was just a, this a is routine, normal, routine yes, sir. audit. That's correct. Just a normal routine audit. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Correctional Work Center uh, report. And I think it's got on here. Uh, uh, budget member that be after that. Okay. Yes. How y'all doing? Good. 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 All right. All right. Talk, talk. Is that what it is when you're at the top? Uh, one of the first uh, you show up and then you let the mayor take it if you're near the bottom. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a shots fired. Man. No, I, 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 think, I, I think it was. Uh, I think he had a legitimate reason. I he know. Here I know he does. Yeah, he does a good job. Boy. Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> It starts with the minutes from the last board meeting. Um, talked about the correctional officers week, which was uh, last a couple of weeks ago, and then the county had a county appreciation day, so we just covered that to make sure the employees knew about it. Um, the board bills they love to pick up. Expenditures were good. Um, checks maybe L commission checks all that has been going good um, discuss the um, average daily population which is still working on I'll talk to uh, the sheriff about that and it's the same conversation they say they have a lot of bodies so you know hopefully we can get some more being transferred the biggest issue with the average daily population is trying to supply enough uh, manpower to the work details to send them out to Smyrna and Laverne, you know, city you know, streets and the parks because this time of year those details increase because of you know the weather and 
the parks and all these other places need to be addressed. So that's why the main concern with the population is always an issue. So you know, we, we brought it up at the, the last meeting. Um, other than that, that was pretty much what was covered at that meeting. Uh, next page I have here is the work release program report. Uh, April, we had 13 in the program. Uh, we had one inmate was back in July, but if you come out in April, two inmates completed the program. One was hired full time at the Interlap, and one was hired full time at Metal Max. And once again, the program is doing great. Um, as you can see, these, you know, um, men and women are, for the most part, being even hired by these companies once they uh, finish their sentence with us. So, and they're paying their restitution, fines, um, child support, and all those things while they're incarcerated. So, uh, state litter pickup for April, we collected two thousand six thousand two cents. Next report after that is the Yale Activity Report. Uh, reflects the <coughs> average account um, counts for, as you can see, the felons uh, for those months, July to April, uh, misdemeanors. Um, next line is the ones that ended during those months, the ones that released during those months. Work The worker out is the work details. That's including all those uh, different agencies and even the ones that work on the grounds and in the facility. So that's that's what those numbers reflect. Um, incident reports, not average. Additional reports, same thing. Actually, it went down in April, which is good. GED program is doing very well. Um, there's a test coming up soon. And report, transportation. DUI litter pickup program is doing good. And that's yeah. Any questions on the report? Just a, you have a couple of companies that seem to be responding real well to offering full-time, uh, I'd call it permanent jobs. Yes. Uh, you know what the retention rate is? How, are they still on the payroll a year later or two years later? Um, mm -hmm. We have about at least half of them are still holding those jobs. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had one that was at the Swanson um, Christian product. She held her job for a year, and then she had some issues and, re and re resigned or retired. But the men are holding on to these jobs for about a year plus. So, like I said, it's it's going strong. I wish we can get some more employers to, and we are working on that on a daily basis to you know to identify them and partner with them. So, we need to figure out a way to stroke those employers a little bit and yeah. give them some recognition for their program. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions? Hearing or seeing none, um, is there a motion? Is there a motion to move to approve? Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion <coughs> carries. And I think we've got a budget amendment. Yeah, this amendment addresses um, it, uh, to provide sufficient funds for the clerical personal line. Um, to less this for the fiscal year, I think uh, finance identified that we're going to be short this amount, uh, twenty five hundred and ten dollars. So we want to take out uh, twenty two hundred from line one one five, which is the sergeant line, and uh, three hundred and ten dollars from one six zero, which is the guards, for a total of twenty five ten to put into that line on one sixty two. Okay, you've heard the request and, and, and the reasons. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Got a motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second. Mm -hmm. Our discussion. Is that include all benefits in that twenty five hundred and ten dollars? Yes. That'd be okay. Anybody else? <coughs> Seeing none, call roll. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Jeff Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Tiffany Phillips. Yes. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Stevens. Yes. Commissioner Young. Yes. Commissioner Farley. Yes. All right. Go. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. All right, next to be the uh, juvenile detention report, and I think she also got a contract with the uh, Department of Children's Services to go along with a report. And I also have a budget. <coughs> okay. Okay, on our monthly report, I will happily answer any questions. I don't believe that there's anything uh, unusual 
Um, but if you have questions, I'll, I'll uh, give it my best shot. The population average is <coughs> holding steady as it relates to prior years. Um, we might be down a little bit. Um, the kids are still coming through the door. The, the daily average is less uh, based on how long they're being detained. Looks like DCS is $13,370 behind or yeah. over. Yeah. That's one month's worth. And I, so I, I, no, mm -mm. Okay. no, we've actually, um, you know, that's actually going quite well. So the state got, I mean, they're paying them a whole lot better than they, than they used to. I remember. Yeah, but actually, there have been months where we've called and said you've, you've, you're trying to give us too much money, and had to adjust it a yeah. little bit. So they're they're doing a lot better than they once did. Any questions on the report? So hearing none. Is there is there a motion to the report? Motion to approve the report. Okay. Motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second. All in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. And next is the, you'll do the contract next. Okay. Um, every year that we uh, agree to contract with the Department of Children's Services or the state, they're going to uh, want to have the contract signed for each year. Uh, it's time to do it again. This is for the exact same amount per bed, per child. Uh, and it has the same top out money. Uh, so this is a, besides some uh, language revolving the uh, PREA mandate, this is the same contract as we signed for last year. Okay. Is there any questions <coughs> on uh, the contract? How much, how much is it daily? The state will pay up to uh, 132.38 per child per day, and that's for every detention facility across the state of Tennessee. Um, they they don't negotiate on their price. <coughs> you say up to? Is that what they're giving us? Yes, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. make, make a motion to approve the contract. Got a motion. Is there a second? Second. Got a second. Our discussion on the contract. Hearing seeing none. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Next is a budget amendment. Yes, I uh, had a last minute budget amendment. Um, I had a uh, employee that left uh, our department and to be able to pay them out for uh, all their comp balances. Um, we're going to need to transfer 2000 from overtime into our attendance to take care of that. You've heard a request. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Got a motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second. Our right, discussion. Hearing or seeing none, call the roll. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Jeff Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Tiffany Phillips. Yes. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner <coughs> Stevens. Yes. Commissioner Young. Yes. Commissioner Farley. Yes. Is that it? That is. What was the tenure of that employee that resigned? It was a termination. Okay. Never mind. So it wasn't long, probably. <laughs> All right. Anything else? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the drug court report. How you doing? I'm okay. How are you? I'm great. Good. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can see our numbers are still a little low, but they're starting to come up. Although we, um, with DUI, we're going to have another big graduation at the end of the month. But we're having people come in every single week, so um, I think I think it'll adjust itself. So. Um, Anyway, that's my number report. And then um, we had our picnic last weekend. That was great. The support foundation always pays for that, but it's a good time. Um, we also went and cleaned up the Greenway today with Judge Bragg. <laughs> that was fun. He got to wear waders, and I sunk in the quicksand, and I was <laughs> the one that had the mud all over me. But it was fun, and it was worth doing. And we did it on behalf of National Drug Court Month, which is this month, and um, they've already got photos up on the um, Greenway Facebook page if y'all want to see what a mess we were. But it, it was it was a real good day, and we enjoyed doing it. 
Um, also, the assistant, gov uh, assistant commissioner for the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services called and invited me to be part of the group of people that will be with the governor on June 3rd. Uh, and they're going to be rolling out their prescription for success, which is the governor's um, plan to reduce the illegal use of prescription drugs in Tennessee. So I'm assuming they're inviting me because I'm the president of the Tennessee Association of Drug Court Professionals, but I wasn't going to say no. So um, I'm kind of excited about that. I've never been invited to anything like that. So. So that's my report, and I do have a contract I need to discuss. I will right, we'll do the report first. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion on the report? Move to approve the report. All right, is there a second? Second. And a second. On a further motion, say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion is carried. And okay, contract. and um, I have the annual contract from the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services. <coughs> it is for the $107,500 $107, that we now get from the state, and that's just for our drug court. So, and we've gotten that to, this will be our second year. Okay. So. You heard the request. Is there a motion or any questions? Motion to approve the grant request. The, yeah, the mayor just needs to sign it. The mayor or whoever else needs to be able to sign it, give them that authority. Goes okay. the budget. Goes the budget. Mm -hmm. All right, we got a motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second. All right. Just all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Thank, Thank you, very, you much. very much. Appreciate it. Right. Paul's report. How are you doing today? Yeah. I'm going to budget oh, with their list. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Right. For the month of April, we had 516 animals that entered into the shelter. 28% uh, of those came from county jurisdictions. 10.9% came from the city of Laverne. 47.1% came from the city of Murfreesboro. And 14% came from the town of Smyrna. Uh, we had 509 animals that left the shelter, uh, 122 of those being adoptions, 231 being humanely euthanized. 80 animals were reclaimed, and then other outcomes, um, such as transfers, uh, wildlife being relocated, uh, were 71. <coughs> it gave us an overall adoption reclaim percentage of 39.7%, and our euthanasia uh, percentage was 45.4. When you factor in all the animals that left the shelter uh, in a live release rate, it was 51.1%. And of the 80 animals that were reclaimed, 25 of those were for uh, surgery programs. At the end of April, we had 101 animals that remained in the shelter. We had 2,016 people visit the shelter and 2,455 logged calls or voicemails for the month. Uh, calls received were 1,662. Calls completed were 1,664. You can see the breakdown there uh, by uh, cities and jurisdictions. And we traveled 11,984 miles. Uh, year to date, we've taken in 6,349 animals that's up 94 animals where we were fiscal um, year to date a fiscal year ago. Um, the percentages for the jurisdictions has remained just about the same. Um, our adoptions are actually up 101 uh, thus far this year. Euthanasias are down. Uh, so those are, those are things that we're excited about. Um, I'd like to see the overall live release rate obviously go up. I like, I like it above the 50% and then climbing. Uh, but overall, year to date, 46.1. Uh, we had 18,503 people in the shelter since July the 1st, and 20,351 log calls or voicemails. Uh, total calls received were 15,159. That's actually up over 10%, and our completed calls are up as well, uh, about the same percentage. Uh, total year to date, we traveled uh, 115,073 miles. And that's the report. Do you want me to go straight into the bite report? Yeah, straight into the bite report. Too. We okay. did all one time. Uh, bite report. Uh, April was a large month for bites and exposures. We had 53 bites that were reported. Nine of those animals were tested. One of those tested positive. And we had nine other exposures. Two of those were tested. One of those tested positive. Both of them were um, skunks. And I think that was two, four, six, eight, eight animals. That have either tested positive or unsatisfactory since January the first. Why uh, you may not know, but 
Why is the bites up for April? The only thing that I could figure was we started seeing the warm weather and people were getting out more. Um, I log all of our, our reports by hand as well as in the computer. Usually I get about a page or a page and a half. This time I had almost two and a half pages. I mean, it's just ridiculous the number that we're yeah. seeing there. Uh, some of these, though, um, I can think of one instance. We fill out a bite report for every victim, whether it's an animal victim or a, um, a human victim. I know we had one that I was going through reports today. Um, there were two or three uh, citizens that were affected, plus two or three of their animals that were affected. So you're talking, you know, five to six cases right there, even though it's one incident. Is there a trend versus year after year after year? I haven't looked at my year years um, years on these to compare to see if it's up or down. Now that was my question. How many of those bites were, especially the one that was positive, was that to? to human or was that to another animal? Well, one of them, if I recall, one was to, was contact with another animal. One was um, a citizen found a skunk on the side of the road that was disoriented. They picked it up, took it home, put it in their bathtub. They played with the skunk. They allowed their child to play with the skunk and then Ooh, called okay. us. We had to send it off for testing, obviously it tested positive. Then we have to turn that over to the state. They had to go through the post-exposure vaccine and all of that. So um, th things that you wouldn't necessarily think of happening, we're seeing that. Um, there's so there many, was a bite in that it was, that was that was the, that was the, con <coughs> that was the contact one. The bite one was, I believe, if I recall correctly, against an animal, but the, okay. um, but the contact, um, it was, uh, I think, in the Blackman zone. Yeah. How, how come when those people picked up that skunk, how come it didn't uh, protect itself? It was already sick. It, it was disoriented, so it didn't. It was, it was already not not acting correctly. Have you all ever done public service announcements on Channel 19 and, and, and talk about, you know, things like that, talk about the bites, and talk about what to do? How to prevent them and things like that? We have not. It's something that we could do. We can consider. I know uh, the deputy mayor previous had asked me to work uh, to talk with the state, you know, regarding where our numbers higher than usual and that type thing. Our numbers have always, if you look at other counties, our numbers have always been high for positives, but we also test much more than the other counties do. Right. Uh, and the state doesn't necessarily like that. They've actually visited us over the last you know, couple of years, asking us not to send as many animals to test. You know, I'm sorry that it costs the state money to do that, but we have citizens to protect, and we're going to send right. them if, if they need to be sent. Pretty soon we'll start having to pay if you would, I'd like to see some, okay. that way some PSA would actually okay. let the public know what to do. Okay. You know, because some people right. might not do it every day. They may not know, and right. that will help them in the event in the okay. future. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. The number that we test, I would say, don't you think that probably had something to do with we were always rural and just recently our population has increased so much? It does have a lot to do with that. A lot of folk, you know, some of the neighboring counties don't handle wildlife at all. Mm -hmm. So all the cases that we've seen that were that were positive or unsatisfactory were in, were in skunks, which they're not going to be touching those to start with. Um, so that, that kind of skews our numbers a little bit. But like I said, if there's, if there's contact, uh, or, or confirmed by, we're going to send it off. Now, unfortunately, it does cost the state $100. It cost us money to have the specimen, you know, shipped there and those type things. Um, but, I mean, we're, we're a public safety agency. We don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. But, yes, I, I think that is a lot of it. So many new neighborhoods and what used to be farmland. Right. Well, quite a few years ago, I mean, we actually poisoned or put out bait and poisons in the county because of the higher rate of rabies. So we haven't had to do that in quite a few years. But I can recall that happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. You probably can too. But, you know, everybody had to keep their animals up. <clears throat> then the bait was removed after a certain period of time. You know, we're not getting back to those kind of critical times. So. Well, when I spoke to the state, like I said, at, uh, the deputy mayor's recommendation, the biggest thing that they said was what we had been saying. Make sure that your animals are vaccinated. That's, that's the biggest thing to, uh, to help these issues. A lot of these things, uh, when you look at the state guidelines, if animal comes back as positive, um, it can make a huge difference in how you proceed on whether the animal is vaccinated or not. Um, 
So that, that, that's the key. All right. So we ain't got a motion on the report yet. Is there a motion to report? Motion to approve the report. Got a motion to approve the report. Is there a second? And a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. We got a budget. I don't think this is on your computer. I don't have the ability to scan to get this to you all. Back when we went through the uh, initial budget process with the mayor, we discussed uh, Paul's vehicle's needs. Uh, and I explained again uh, when we presented our budget to public safety as well as last week to the finance committee. Uh, we have, we replaced the vehicle uh, the first of this year. Um, but that was the first new vehicle and unit that we had had since 2008. So we went for six years with 10 vehicles not replacing any. I have three daily drivers. Two of them are 194 plus. One of them is a 202,000 uh, plus mile vehicle. Um, when we did the stuff back in February, my initial request was, was to ask for two vehicles in next year's budget. Uh, the mayor asked that we reevaluate towards the end of this budget year to see if we could do something and then put one in for next year. Um, there, based on finances recommendations we were looking at pulling money out of payroll line items to be able to do this finance doesn't doesn't necessarily want to do that finance and the mayor's recommendation was uh, since the development tax fund has come in better than expected to pull those funds out of the development tax to purchase another uh, unit and chassis this fiscal year and then whatever would be left in our payroll lines would go back in just to undesignated fund balance at the end of the year Okay, you've heard the request and the, and the reason for the request. Is there a motion? Monies are available, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Move to approve. A motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second. Our right, discussion. Is this <clears throat> was this in our budget that we discussed the other night? I, don't, I thought no, I would you call just, us. We just have one vehicle in next year's budget. <clears throat> That's it all it we had have. A box, did it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What, what we're doing here is getting a, a vehicle this year, and then we'll get a vehicle in your upcoming budget right. that we, solves your. Well, well, we got a vehicle in January that was in you know our, our current bus, this year's budget. This would be a vehicle that we'd be able to purchase out of this year's budget as well, and then there's one in for next year. So I'll be able to replace two of the highest mile, you know, highest mileage vehicles, and then um, try to get us back on. Like I said, we went for those six years and didn't replace any. Really, with, with the 10, 11 vehicles that we have, we need to be looking at one a year. But we've gotten behind on that schedule, so we're playing, we're, we're playing catch up. Any, any more questions? You know, uh, all the cities contribute to the 2014-15 budget that you know of, or have you heard from all of them? Uh, still the same. I, I go meet with Murfreesboro uh, first of next week. I never hear anything from Smyrna. Um, and then, um, but we, you know, we did submit a request. They, they did ask for that, but I never hear from them other than they just, they just say, hey, you were approved and send a check. Uh, Laverne, uh, there's been um, zero communication there. Any more questions? All right. Got I, I, did, I did have one okay. question. You said that would give you two. You bought one. This is getting the second one, and the, the one for the next budget is three. Last time I counted. That's correct. Yes. So it's yes. not two. It's three. It's two for this year. Two in this year's budget, yes, sir. And that will help to get us help to start getting us caught back up. And it'll sort of get us in the position where one per year will sort of keep us. Well, I just wanted to make sure I could still count to three. <laughs> how, how, many, exactly how many vehicles right. do you have in your fleet? That's correct. We have we have ten vehicles that are used regularly. Uh, one of the vehicles, uh, when we put the vehicle in service in January, we, that made a spare vehicle because we always have at least one or two at the garage. We have an, an office car that we just surplused, and we have a flatbed truck that we use, you know, for hauling and those type things. Let me make it. How many patrols do you have on a daily? Ten that are used on a daily basis. Okay. And, one, okay. and, and and one spare. Okay. And one spare. That's what I was and what we'll do is uh, the spare vehicle that we have will just continue as we get a new vehicle. You'll replace the, old, the, the oldest the ones. The oldest available comes correct up. will become the spare. Okay. Uh, but uh, total vehicle wise, the number uh, once that one is surplus, total vehicles remains at twelve. Anybody else? Seeing none, call roll. Commissioner P. 
Yes. Commissioner Jeff Phillips. Aye. Commissioner <coughs> Tiffany Phillips. Yes. Commissioner Schaefer. No. Commissioner Stevens. Yes. Commissioner Young. Yes. Commissioner Farley. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next is the Amlet Service Report. And I think you said you had a budget amendment too. A couple. We're only allowing one. one oh one. man, so I got a pick. <laughs> you tell me about the pick. That's bad. Good evening, commissioners. Um, total number of calls were 2,213. That's up from this time last year, and it's going to continue to go up um, as our population increases. Um, <coughs> our response time is down, though, to 7.7 7, uh, minutes. Um, basically, you see all of our total billed, total collected, um, and the percent collections is up to 86% this year. But that? understand that it just depends on the billing cycle. You know, how much did we bill last year, yeah. or last month, versus this month, and how much do we get from two months ago? And that's why it, it, it varies from position to position. Um, Does the write-offs have anything to do with that collection number? Uh, the write-offs, what the, the, write the, insur the insurance write-offs, as you know, we, from Medicare, Medicaid, and all the CMS stuff, we have to basically say, we're going to accept what you pay us, and that's going to be it. And that's nowhere near what the cost <laughs> of the ambulance is. And so we must write off those, and that's where we get those write-offs from. D does that make your percent collection higher? No. I mean, the percent collected is is is, and as you can see, our write-offs was were um, 587. We build more, and that's <coughs> why you see the percentage come back that way. It, it by by law or statute that, that you can't Correct. overcharge more than what federal. Uh, yeah. right. So we can this patient is, we want, we just may not get paid. exactly. Right. <laughs> that's what happens with it's, Medicare. That's right. right. Federal law it says that. This is what they're going to pay, right. even though that's not what the ambulance bill is. Um, below that is our maintenance reports and how much per mile, and we have driven a total of 52,979 miles. Um, after that are out of, uh, out of uh, total number of calls, units responding to out of zone, which basically says that our zones are getting busier as, as we go through. So. That's the end of that page. The next is our in-service training that we do. Our pedal medics had a couple of things going on. Tops team is always pretty busy, and of course, our react and special events um, are on that page. And it's especially here toward the end of school, it's extremely busy. We're at a lot of Mother's Day outs and end of school things, and you know those kinds of things. Spring fling, keep it busy. Exactly, spring fling, and yeah, it did keep us busy. As a matter of fact. Not only the spring fling, I think there was something over at the <coughs> MC Suites. Oh uh, yeah, that, kept that was busy. that was definitely that definitely kept us mm -hmm. busy. In fact, we ended up stationing an ambulance there. <laughs> yeah, so that was that, that kept. Us I come I come through there and I thought I'd been left and yeah. went to another world. Right, and you had so, um, and then of course our our uh, special I, mean, yes, I, I think it would come on this page, but. Uh, the yellow dot program with Terry Cunningham. The yellow dot, and you'll see on number nine um, on the REACT okay. team, they're meeting with the fire departments and police departments right now to kick that off. Okay, and they've, okay. they've got all the infos available. Though, yeah, right? and I think that Terry has now got us registered as a, as a distribution center, mm -hmm. and so I think they're going to do one big kickoff and do a PSA on it. And, and then to make sure everybody knows. The city fire departments are doing it in the cities. But right. In conjunction with yes, exactly. the info from you and the doors. Right, yeah. exactly. Okay. And, and the other thing, too, is, is she's meeting with all of these departments. She's starting off with the line share departments, and then she'll go to the other fire and police departments okay. and, and get them on board, too. Uh, thank you. Okay. But we're, we're extremely interested in that program. So You're doing that yellow dot program uh -huh. on 19? On 19. Uh, I think Terry did have a PSA on the yellow dot, but I don't. I'm not sure it has gone out yet. But I know that she has got actually a couple. One on 19 and one on what's the city channel? Town three. 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 Mm -hmm. So I know that Terry's working on those. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, the next is the, our response time report in the different areas, and again, our total response time is 7.7. .7. On scene is 13.2. Uh, total transport time is 9 2. The reason we have more transport time is because we go out emergency for everything, but non emergency, we only come back in emergency 10% of the time. Okay, our district calls are on there. Commissioner Young, 228. And well, they, they rezoned it, and it's, it's gone down significantly. It's gone down some, hasn't it? <laughs> and uh, just because the hospital was moved out. But um, then the uh, district calls for the year is, is also on the next page. This is the telltale page, and it is basically where we're making calls in each one of our zones and each one of our ambulances. Manchester's still coming up in zone four. It is. You know, one of the things that we don't see on here are, a lot are the are the um, standbys that that are going on in, in the background, basically. So, where they're coming in to stand by for that big MTSU zone. Would a second ambulance cut down on that at Burton? Absolutely. And the reason why I'm saying that everybody's everybody's worried about last casts. There's no calls out there. All the calls are in town and they're moving Manchester because Burton's out, so MTSU comes over to cover Burton and Salem. Mm -hmm. So MTSU's left unprotected because they're moving over when really Burton and Salem are where all the call volumes happen. Mm -hmm. Well, actually MTSU well, they make a huge they, amount of calls they, at MTSU. Okay. Burton and but there could Burton be some rezoning there could be some rezoning on if we had more ambulance. If you had another ambulance mm -hmm. in the inner loop. Mm -hmm. You could probably shift the zones a little bit, and MTSU wouldn't necessarily run over. Definitely above my pay grade. Right. <laughs> well, I'm just, I've always heard this argument, it needs to go in last casts, but that's not a drip. We're going to be doing the exact same thing we're doing now, dancing around it, is what's going to be happening. When really the ambulance needs to go in downtown where the call volume is taking yeah, place. Yeah, we would have to do a, a you know assessment on where everything needed to be, so... Well, that scenario, you, you, well, you're talking to do away with all of that. No, no, you wouldn't all, do away with it, but MTSU, did, MTSU should have been probably further that. out than where it was at. <laughs> at, at but <coughs> that may have been a... But, but not out in Las Casas. I, I it could have been... When Mr. Nunley is looking at building that new ambulance station right there next to the Pace Center, mm -hmm. I think he's planning on putting another ambulance in there. Yeah, yeah, one of his and that would be the... That would correct a lot of this right here. I, I think that's what he's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's been my whole right. argument the whole time. Yeah. It would, it, yeah. it would adjust on, this quite a bit. He's planning on two. Wouldn't cure it all. Yeah. I just want to make sure that, that, that no. those, those rural no. people would love to. We're, You're not we're, rural we're, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're inside Rucker Lane, and that's. I, I represent rural though. Well, not much, <laughs> not anymore. The, the the whole that whole area is city now. For the next five, six, seven seven or eight pages, um, they are thank yous and, and uh, those types of things, some news recognition that, that uh, we got and um, those types of things. And then we have vacation denials and, you know, back in the winter, of course, we, we kind of cut down on these. Now we're getting a lot of people wanting a vacation time. So there's a lot of vacation denials. We have a lot of people off on FMLA, especially on B shift. Um, so uh, so we have to deny those vacations because we just don't have the personnel to cover. Do you still have a part time? We still have a part time cadre, and they're covering every possible thing yeah. that they can. Yeah. I just want to make sure that way part time come in and cover mm -hmm. with someone that exactly is that on FMLA or whatever. Exactly. That way Somebody might be able to get a vacation day at some point. Mary Burgess, you might be wanting to answer this question a little bit better. I know there was something where these folks, and we, we danced around this too, where um, if they get so many vacation hours, it rolls over to sick hours. Now, if that person ups and leaves and go to a different department, do they get to cash that in? I don't know. The, the reason why I'm saying that is because if we keep denying them their vacation, that's their benefit that they should be able to keep. They, those, those hours are rolled and they, I know at Murfreesboro, I don't have to keep my sick hours. If they get vacation hours, they're, they're there forever, period. 
Well, I thought yeah. they rolled. I, I thought they rolled vacation hours, rolled uh, sick time hours if they don't if they accrue so many. Yeah, so I then know. now we're kind of penalizing yeah. our employees. Is what I'm arguing. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to get clarification from uh, Mr. Hafner and, and Mr. Lundy. Yeah. I really don't because, know. Because because if we keep and I said over. this last time and we, but if we keep having this amount, you're gonna. Well, this, this is an unusually high amount. It's been it much, much smaller the last several, several months, but it is. And here you, we back into the spring, summer, vacant right. time you, again. You can see on the next page where those hours went. Um, you know, you're talking about we have vacation hours, even though it looks like we've denied a lot and we have, but these are people who come in the night before and say, hey, can I have off tomorrow? And, uh, and, that is on a case-by-case -case basis, and you can see that we paid 1,762.9 hours in vacation time. Those are scheduled vacations. Well, my argument here is that another and sometimes not, sometimes twenty. Another county, a clerical county general employee that says, "Hey, I need." They follow their department protocol, and they put in. They more than likely can get off. These are public safety people. They don't. Mm -hmm. They don't have the option. So why should they have? But we tell them that X amount of hours we have to put it into uh, sick time instead of because hey I did try to use mine but I'm not getting now it's rolling over into sick time and I want it to stay my vacation it was their earned vacation I just think there's a problem there that we've tried to address it before and there's you know well, we just dance around it I mean it's not right to the public safety folks and everybody else in county general because there's no staffing requirements and. Commissioner Farley knows we will, this from being a, a chief. We'll let Mr. Nunley address that again, but I mean, he addressed that previously and he felt like, you know, we what we had in place was an effective, absolutely well, that's, equitable Well, that's process. the big complaint I get from okay. members of their department, that's a, of their employees, is that this happens. In well, I'd be happy to take some of those complaints. I don't think, and we'll I don't get, think we'll they want to, Mr. Nunley. I don't think they want to, I think they want to come to their, you know, we can't hire and fire them for complaining. Y'all can, so I don't think that's why they no, come forward. We're not going to do that either. That's uh, in my report. All right. Any questions on the report? Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. And a second. <clears throat> All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. And the budget amendment? Do I have to pick which one? I will we'll, we'll, we'll give you, we'll give you two. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, the first one is we get uh, sixteen thousand dollars for um, from ECD to train dispatchers um, in you know as part of their training, and what we're asking to do is move eight thousand dollars of that from from that over into the in-service uh, budget because that's where we actually take it from to begin with, and so we're just replacing money that we have used for dispatcher training. It comes to be eighteen thousand. I mean eight thousand dollars. Let me ask you a question. So you're getting sixteen thousand, and um, you're wanting to use the eight to to transfer it into into uh, in service training. What, what are you going to do about other eight? It, it goes into contributions. actual contributions, right? It'll stay in the contributions. And I'm just asking this question, but I, I thought it all had to go to training. Uh, it, it can go to overtime. It can go to different different things so okay. it, it is actually designated for classes to pay overtime the PRN oh, okay overtime for, for the training exactly. part okay exactly. gotcha gotcha all right you've heard the requests is there a motion motion to approve and a motion is there a second second and a second discussion call one Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Jeff Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Tiffany Phillips. Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Stevens. Yes. Commissioner Young. Yes. Commissioner Farley. Yes. And and that because that keeps from having to get people time off. Exactly. Uh, um, the, the light went off of it. <laughs> so, so we we pay for that out of the other budgets until Steve you know moves right. it over into our budget. Um, and the last one is moving the two hundred fifty thousand dollars from this year's budget into next year's budget because they we we are not due to get the engineer plans back for the pace center you know and how we're going to remodel and rechange that until after the after the years okay you heard a request or a motion so moved got a motion is there a second i'll say that doesn't that normally go back to any fund balance and then we reimburse it after the 
after the well, year. This Lisa thinks Lisa this is sort of what we do on the capital project. She's going to so move this over into the capital yeah. projects she's line item, and it'll just be sitting there until <coughs> we use that up. Right. She she's actually the one who requested us do this. Okay. Got a motion a second. More discussion. Call roll. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Jeff Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Tiffany Phillips. Yes. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Stevens. Yes. Commissioner Young. Yes. Commissioner Farley. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Next is a uh, fire rescue report. Come on up. Okay. If you would, Chief, uh, we introduce you both yourselves. Yeah. Uh, Chief Farley is actually out tonight. Uh, I'm Assistant Chief Odom, and this is Captain Sloan. So, one of our new hires. Uh, on the first two pages, that's our year-to-date calls, 452, uh, and the majority of those, as you can tell, are EMS calls, where we're running first responder. The third page, that is for the month, 106 calls, and the majority of those are also EMS calls. Totally in this calls that you're talking about. Does that include Kittrell, uh, Amable, Walterville? Walter no, that that's the one that that's the unit that y'all run. Correct, yes, sir. That's a <coughs> that's just medical calls where we run with the ambulance service uh, first responder calls. Were you talking three elevens or yeah, uh, three twenty ones? The EMS calls excluding that's not okay. vehicle accidents. There are vehicle accident responses <coughs> on here. He's just saying Correct. there's a yeah. substantial number of these medical calls that they're including and, in this total number. And well, I just wanted to clarify the numbers there. Yeah. You know, so yeah. And this is just where from. This is yeah. Well, this county is just fire rescue, just that little group. These was four stations. Yeah, these 452 have. don't include anything. That's just but Rutherford County. Just Rutherford County, county Fire Rescue. Yeah, because yeah. each each fire has turned their TIFRs in mm -hmm. to the state to where to go to NIFRs. Uh, the next page is just a breakdown of the MBAs, and that's all the county rescue trucks. A uh, total of 33 of those with the average response time of 9.2 minutes. Next page is just the water report. Uh, total calls turned in. Uh, 1,226.9, that's year to date. And then total training hours uh, is 2,518. And then the uh, last page there on the report is where we turn into codes. And that's six structure fires for last year, or for, I'm sorry, for last month. And that's just what we have to turn into them so they can go out and inspect it for whatever they might need. And okay, and that does, so that means on these uh, houses or structures that they weren't necessarily destroyed. That's up to codes to see if they come codes off. Codes to go out and see what permits, I guess, they yeah. need. Have, they'll have to pull and whatnot. Well, and to take them off stuff. Yeah. Property tax list, too. Well, right. And also codes whenever there's a burnout <coughs> or the subdivision. You know, they, they want to know where they're at. That way, you know, residents keep calling because sometimes it takes a while for insurance companies and it, it sits there for a year or two and that way they they try to get that process going a little quicker for the neighborhoods. Gotcha. That's our report. All right, any questions on the report? No questions? I entertain a motion. Move to approve the report, Mr. Chairman. Got a motion. Do we have a second? And a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Anything else? I've got, I've got something I'd like to discuss with y'all. Um, Chief, I know you've been in charge of maintenance um, since the department's inception. Um, and our maintenance costs have risen probably 
a lot. Three or four times what we originally budgeted four years ago. I'm so not I sure. Think we had twenty-five exactly thousand or not. Know, I'm not sure we can confirm or deny that. We, it's pretty close. It's, I think it was twenty-five thousand starting out. Now we're over a hundred thousand a year. Well, we've close got, to a hundred. We've got. We started out with one rescue uh, squad and one station. So now we've increased that. So I mean, we've added a couple of other stations since the well, beginning. Yep. Yeah, the the main the main focus of the maintenance we've had some stuff with the rescue issues which we've addressed over the last couple of years replacing some rescues and buying some new rescues we just bought Kittrell a rescue uh, that's I believe in service now yes uh, yeah it's been in service a since few months. about a month yeah a month right after we got it so but one thing I'm looking at is with those trucks are 1990 91 models and 99 2000 models so they're going to be 25 years old and 15 years old with it. The NFPA standard says that at 25 years of age, you take a truck out of service. And I believe it's at 15 years of age, it goes into reserve, if I'm mistaken. Uh, can you help me out here, Gary? Is that, does that sound about right? I think that sounds about so right. So we've hit that benchmark, and we haven't done anything to replace a fire engine. We've replaced rescues, but we haven't done anything. We've got to start. And what really bothers me is I got to looking at the development tax, and we're up, and correct me if I'm wrong, Commissioner P, because you get to see the development tax come in every month, but we're up to close of, up close to a million dollars of what we had the year before, I believe, or close to. Over. Over, over a million already? No, over. <laughs> over what we, we had yeah. last year, yes. Yeah, that, that's right. what I'm getting at. Yeah. we got to start replacing these trucks. And I've asked for a plan, and what I'd like to see, because if because what I'm getting ready to ask would come out of the development tax, so it wouldn't. It's not going to hinder us having a tax increase. Uh, it's coming out of the development tax. It's not going to cause us to have a one cent property tax hike by any means. Um, it's coming out of a separate fund going into a certain fund to purchase uh, apparatus. And what I'd like to see us is purchase two trucks because we've got to start and one truck is not going to do uh, how many how many first out fire engines do we have I know each county part each each department has two trucks right and then some departments have more than two trucks that they use on a most home. everybody's first out pumper is the O2 trucks which is the 99 2000 trucks uh, and those are because they they're four door, and they're supposed to be going to reserve status this year because of their age, and then the older trucks, the ninety one trucks, which some stations those are first out because some departments have two stations. Right. So it's still a first out truck, and it's twenty five years old. Well, I'm just looking at it numbers wise. If we don't start now replacing something, we're going to get to the point where we have an incident, and I can, I know for a fact I was on a, a fire and the pump quit pumping on the fire. I mean, I'm not going to say what department that was with. It wasn't with the county department. It was another department i was been associated with, but I was pumping that truck and that pump went out. And I know for a fact that department did regularly scheduled maintenance on it like clockwork. The problem was it was just old. It was wore out. It might have had very low miles, but it had real high hours. It's just like a track hoe. I know Mayor Burgess knows the construction business. You, you know, if it's got 10,000 hours on it, it's going to be wore out and junk. It's the same thing with these fire trucks. And the, we just voted to replace a, a Paul's vehicle, and he had 10 regulars and one spare. And I'm looking at, we've got, I you know, telling how many regulars we have, and then I, we probably don't have a, but a couple of spare trucks that are just truly spares. Um, how how many on on the old one and the old two? How many miles and how many pump hours are on both those? I wouldn't be able to tell you without looking. I know on engine one hundred two, which is at station one, which is the truck that these guys are running, uh, it's right at a hundred thousand miles on it. Pump hours, I'm not sure. Or engine hours is actually what it is. Engine hours, I'm not sure. 
the next one is engine 202 which is out on Old Salem and towards Rockville and it's right at 50,000 miles maybe a little over uh, and once again I'm not sure on engine hours I can get all that for you that would be no problem uh, Mary, you raise your hand. We, we have all of that I don't know about the pump hours but we have a replacement schedule that's been prepared that tells us the mileage on every piece of equipment we've got I don't know about the pump hours I, it may yeah. or may not be and in there. if not we can and it takes about that. at a minimum placing two of these vehicles and, and they have identified and prioritized the vehicles that need to be replaced first so we've got that schedule it takes about six hundred thousand dollars a year to sort of get us back on schedule and keep us on the schedule and, uh, and that's we've only got we've only got one in the budget for this year but i don't think that's even a pumper is it that's, 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 that's a rescue that's so, to replace the other that's uh, a rescue that's to get our rescue caught up that week is in addition so if to we the could, fire if we can step back and maybe review available capital funds in the development tax maybe we can go ahead and add one at least or I don't know if we can get two or not, but even in next year's budget. So um, we just sort of are waiting until we got through with this budget and look at the whole picture. But the point is well taken, and we, and we need to start this. And, uh, but we do have a schedule of which pieces of equipment need to be replaced in some sort of priority order. Okay. We, I've asked to see that schedule. Well, for it's, it's available. I've they had to redo it. When you asked years. for it, it was not correct and complete. We did redo that, revisit that, and it, and it is now uh, available. How, how many are we going to replace a year? It takes about $600,000 a year, about it's, two per it's, year. It's going to take about, and then you've got to add every year that you don't replace, just add $25,000 a truck. Yeah, and of course they've so got. So that 600000 is going to go to six fifty to seven. they They've got appreciation so. scheduled in there that takes them into account the fact that every year you wait, it goes up in, in, uh, in cost. Now, I know. Um, but my, I got 30 years experience in the fire service, and, and I know, I know, Commissioner Young and I don't always agree on certain issues, but I agree with him 100% on this. Um, these apparatuses that we've got, um, they have the, they they got the potential of a liability issue. With, uh, with the permission of the public safety. June the 4th is sort of when we're going to consolidate all of this budgeting process. It brings everything together, and we can have Lisa tell budgeting budget committee if there's available money in our uh, development tax fund, and if so, we can uh, maybe craft some additional expenditures there. Well, what I'd like to see done um, is 650000 That's $325,000 a truck. That's what it's going to cost plus equipment and that's not the cheapest grade truck possible that's not a Cadillac truck you know I'm not trying to get the county fire department Ferrari fire engines here but I'm also that's not also is. trying to get them a Kia fire engine either I'm not knocking Kia it's the economy version uh, you know a Nissan's a good good car that's what we need for the fire service here because that's how busy they are and I think that's reasonable it's not something that's um, there's a time and a place for both and, and the, you know those cars are great all across the board and the same thing with fire engines but I'm looking the best bang for a buck and I think 325 a piece and I'd like to see us get two uh, out of the development tax whether you and uh, so I'd like to make a motion to put to for the county fire department to add six hundred fifty thousand dollars into their budget out of next year's development tax and that way it's actually there on June the 4th and it can be discussed then not just talked about well, we have a schedule because I've asked for a schedule for four years and that's gone nowhere okay, we, got a motion. we have a schedule we didn't when I've asked for it all right we got a motion on the floor is there a second is there a second I'm going to second the motion. The reason why you have to step down from the chairman. The chairman can do well, that. I, I'll, I'll step down and, and yield to the, to, to the vice chair, please, sir. I had to go ahead. Yeah, I'll second the motion. Discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there any further discussion? 
Well, I'd, I'd like to say one more thing about it. <clears throat> like I said, the development tax is up. If the money's not there, the money's not there, but it is. And we're funding everything else but replacing these trucks. Most of us live, I think a couple folks live in the rural area, everybody else lives in the municipalities. The municip but what I'm trying to do here is gonna save the county from having to buy 12 at one time, which is gonna cost us three and a half million dollars. <coughs> um, you know, we don't have the money for that. Oh. This, this to me is a liability issue. What's going to happen when one of these fire engines going down the road breaks down, kills somebody, whether it be a, uh, a citizen or whether it be a firefighter? What's going to happen when they're out here pumping on a fire and the fire, the, the, the pump goes down or, or something happens? Uh, we got problems with uh, having to buy that house or, or whatever, or having some kind of litigation. And Sheriff, I don't mean anything by this, but by no means, because you deserve the, all the vehicles that you get every year with, because they're running 33 traffic. The same way the uh, uh, the fire engines are doing. They're running 33 traffic, and, and, and if you've never done it, it it's, it's a different situation. You're, if you've got a vehicle that's not up to par, you're sitting down there running down the road by the seat of your britches. And if something happens, it's, it's bad. It's, 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 it's real bad. And we've got to do something to start this process, and that time, I think, is now. Uh, like I said earlier, there's, there's times I don't agree with Matt, but I agree with him 100% tonight. We've got to start on this, and I think this is the right time to start it. And I think these, these firefighters out here deserve it. It's time. Uh, I know I was involved in the second uh, purchasing. Uh, I was one of, the, one of the commissioners, one of the commissioners that spearheaded the second purchasing back in 99 or 2000. And it's, it's time. It's overtime. It's it's just that plain and simple, and you know I, and I'm not trying to call anybody out here. Y'all's professions, y'all are great professionals. You all have got do a good job in your professions. I don't claim to be a teacher, a lawyer, or HR person, or business person, or, you know, or, or factory, and but I got 30 years. 30 years in the fire service, and I think, I don't know what I'm talking about, these fire engines have got to be started to be replaced. We've had three firefighter fatalities in this county, and they've all been because of fire apparatus wrecks. Our fire engines do not have the safety standards that are in place today, so we're putting our people on substandard apparatus. It met the standard for 20 years ago or 25 years ago, but it doesn't meet the safety standards to now. So that's like putting your 16-year-old uh, in a car without any airbags or even seat belts. Now these cars do have seat belts. That's it. They've got manual transmissions, which now you can't do that anymore. Um, but one other thing I want to point out, and this is the money side of it, because this is something you want to hear. It, it's going to take, how long does it take to build a fire truck on average? Six to eight months? Nine to, nine to 12. Nine to 12 months. So even by the time we <coughs> approve this money in this coming budget, so it would be July 1st we approve the budget, we might not have to pay for it till the next year, but at least the truck's getting built. So that's another kind of selling point here is it's going to take so long to build the trucks because they, there's so much to go into them. It's actually going to be the next year. So if we wait another year, it's going to be an additional year. So does that kind of make sense? Do y'all see where I'm going with that? All right, but I want to add a point. I agree with what y'all have said in the motion that you made that we need to get started on this. But we can't, I don't think either Commissioner P or I know off the top of our head, uh, the mayor may, of what commitments we have and what are other needs? I mean, we've got roads that this county's committed to that we complete with uh, 
the city of Murfreesboro, for example. And those things, since that commitment came, now the cost is going up faster than fire trucks go up, I think, and, and, and the roads. And, that, and that's what's got to be looked at. And that's what I, I just want it sent to budget. Okay. Like. And okay. that's what I'm going for. Get it to budget and let's get some in-depth discussion. We've got a member of this committee that's on budget. Yeah, two. Or, or two, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I always forget your own name. I know what Robert is, but if we get it to budget, it can get discussed and it can right. in more depth, and the mayor can have more insight, and Lisa can have more insight, okay. uh, and we can move somewhat forward and say it's a priority instead of. <clears throat> I want to say one last thing here when we move on, but there's, there's two ways that it's, the, the national statistics of firefighters gets killed. One of them is going down in, in, in the vehicle having wrecks. That gets firefighters killed numerous times. The second thing is when the firefighter's inside of that structure and it loses water. Water is their lifeline. When that pump goes down, <coughs> water's cut off. So imagine being inside of a 1,500-degree structure and, you, and you've got your water and you're trying to put it out and, and cool it down and you ain't got any water. So just imagine that, and that's going to happen. And when it does, we're, the county's liable. So I, that's all I got to say. Let me just ask a question. You said there's already a schedule put together. I mean, the schedule we put together, on the average, it takes two, buying two of these vehicles, roughly 600000 which escalates in price every following year. That's what it's going to take at a minimum to get the schedule so, going. So we're not far off at all. Your 600000 is right on point. So right, so what we can do, we can start right now, or start this year and do it. If we, if we can put it into the total budget package, yes, you can. But we have to look at the total, the whole, and see all these pieces fit together, and budget can do that. Okay. And, and where my other fifty thousand came from, Mayor, is SCBAs. The air tanks we have are nineteen ninety ones, and two thousand models, and nineteen ninety ones have got to start getting replaced because you can't go into a, a fire with a. A, basically a scuba tank that's 25 years old. They don't even meet any type of standard anymore. So I think the sheriff got rid of his at the jail because they were so far. <laughs> He's nodding his head back there. So that's the other 50,000. That's why I said 650. So, further discussion. Is this motion to amend the current year budget to spend the current money that we have or is it to put it in next year's next budget? Next year's budget. Not this year's budget. Next year's budget. To put it in there if to send it to forward it to the budget committee in next year's budget. <coughs> and you put the date of June 4th, which is the next, next budget meet meeting, which reviews the budget. And discusses the... Is it next Wednesday? Yeah. Y'all yeah. be able to do a lot further with it there. So, and this is going to come from the development tax? Yes. Well, that's, so what if the... Or, unless unless uh, Lisa finds a better fund that it can come out of, or that's just where we've gotten money before for fire engines, so. So then what do we do if the development tax is lower next year? Well, it's going to be, well, it's going to be a year away anyways. And with the economy rebounding, I don't see that being any lower. Well, is, right now, the what's in the development, X amount is already taken care of in the development tax, but it's going to be more than what we budgeted for this year. For this saying. year, it's more than we budgeted so, for this so year. So that's where he's by a million talking. dollars. They're so talking. We may have, you know, at least has got a schedule of the development tax fund already. What she's mm -hmm. proposed to use out of that development tax to pay for budget projections and needs for next year. So all of this has to be just put into the whole matrix of uh, of evaluation. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's why I didn't give you a second one, though. Mm -hmm. I'm like Commissioner Farley. You know, I fought to get that second round of trucks, mm -hmm. too. I mean, well, we both, all of us that were right. sitting here know that. But That's why I said include other commissioners. I, I will say this. The development tax is really up substantial this year. Just drive around the county and look at the apartments. I do not believe you will see the increase in apartments again next year like we've seen no. this year. So I don't know that the development tax can be sustained be another year at this level. <coughs> but this is, all of this has to be discussed the budget committee and we have numbers and, and Lisa can bring data on, on what currently is in there, what we're using it for this year, what's going to be left over as reserve. So all of this is just part of a, a broader discussion that we can have. I, I need to know what the motion is. I, I've gotten confused because 
I think we've added to the motion as we've had this discussion here, and I'm not really sure what we're voting on. Ask that the county fire department add 650000 to its 2014-15 budget from the county development tax or other appropriate fund and forward to the budget committee for discussion at the June 4 meeting. So we're asking that the fire department increase their budget, but we're asking that the budget committee review the availability of it. Correct. So we're not making any demands that they that they do it. See if the money's there is what the record, uh, the motion actually says. Well, the, the other reason I didn't second that is uh, not knowing what the development tax is exactly. A million dollars is fine, but half that goes to debt service. So let's cut it back down to 500000 And then, of course, we don't know what it's going to be next year. Now, I'm not saying I don't want these firings. I'd like to get them. But two, uh, who is prioritizing who gets what trucks? I know when we've done this in the past, uh, I know the departments that came up on the rear. Uh, and I don't want to see that kind of thing again. I, I'd like to see this report <coughs> that I've been hearing about. If it's available by the board, please have it there. It's, uh, it's available. Yeah, and I, I'd like I to say think too, that are we talking about putting this into Rutherford County's budget, or are we talking about putting this uh, toward the volunteers that are not in Rutherford, under, directly under Rutherford County, or are we talking about buying them to, for those departments? Are I mean, we just talking about just buying them for Rutherford County's departments? You know, that's why I want to see this study and find out who's getting what out of these trucks. All, all of the departments are in the study, and, and I can't tell you which ones. <laughs> they have tried, I think, in a reasonable way to determine which trucks, independent of where they are, are most needed in, in the Well, that's, in, that's in what I want to happen. Uh, you know, all you guys just got to do is flip that screen back, and you'll see that there are more departments out here fighting fire in this county than just Rutherford's. And not only that, they're doing it. On forty-five thousand a year, the highest paid, and some of them a little bit less than that. And they're fundraising, and they're volunteering, they're doing their time for free. Uh, to me, those guys ought to be prioritized. Part of looking at these. Now, if we've got a damaged engine somewhere, yes, that's different, and we need to look well, at that. I think that's part of. Well, of the, I want to make sure all of it's part of it. And I hadn't seen the study either. And that's yeah. why, you know, till I see the study, you know, it's going to be part of me determining whether I would. So yeah, let's do this right now or not. Well, every every engine, no matter what's going to be owned by Rutherford County government, so it doesn't matter if they give one truck one to to Walter Hill and they give one truck to the county, or they give, and then the next year they give two trucks to Amaville. I mean, you know, or two trucks to the county. I mean, it's just but it's I'm, still it's that's that's beyond my call of where they go and what type truck truck it is. And, and to me, that's. The fire chiefs association and the fire chief kind of determine that. Well, I think the, uh, the the two new rescues that have been bought have been have one that went to Kittrell and one that went to Amable. I believe yeah. is that correct? Yes, sir. So I mean, that's already you know. Matter of fact, the one that Kittrell got was both in the counties, and your chief out there went and met with Mayor. He, he picked Burgess, it out, and yeah, he he picked it out. And that's, then they, they give the one that the county was supposed to have gotten. That's well, we I, discussed that in this meeting here, and I asked Farley, uh, Larry, where it was going, and he said Kittrell, because they had a truck that was just like we were right. discussing these others, that's why it went to Kittrell. But that was agreed on before yeah. the chief got yeah. out. We, we decided yeah. together that that was the best place and the most mm -hmm. needed location for that well, that's, that's what I want to make sure yeah. is going to happen with these yeah. trucks. That, we end up buying some more it's the same same criteria we need to put them where they're needed i'm with you that we just don't buy for the county and then the county hand down to i I'm, yeah. that's i'm completely with you on that <laughs> uh, so um that's where the fire chiefs association the mayor and the, the fire chief come in and they can look at run numbers and conditions of engines and i, I don't think that study has that detailed of what really i'm with you though I get what you're saying. Well, you so. got to take in the most need, like for where the population is that they're going to be covering and all that. Who's running the most calls? What the yeah, number of calls? Stuff, yeah. Yeah. But that's that's something that we got to see where the money is first. So, is there any more discussion? 
on the motion. Okay. What are we asking for, really? I mean, we've had some. This goes. Our motion is that it goes to budget. Now I'm confused again. So somebody tell me what we're voting for. Read it. <laughs> she had a really good motion. So. <laughs> Ask that the county fire department add six hundred and fifty thousand dollars to its 2014-15 budget from the county development tax or other appropriate fund and forward to the budget committee for discussion at its June 4 meeting. Does that include the, the, who will make a determination as to where to go if it's approved? Who will do that? Mm -hmm. that? That study that they've got. Is that what you're talking about, Robert? That's what I'm talking about. Is, do, do you support this motion the way that it is? I support it going to the budget and us discussing it there, but I want to see this report. Yeah. You know, the report's going to decide for me whether, yeah, I'm in, in for this or not, and the availability of the funds. You know, I don't know that we have it. I know there are other capital wanted. projects that I've seen lists of, and you know, that's not one that's been on there. You know, but, but and, 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 I don't and I'm not arguing with you. Yeah. I, I'm saying it does need to be on there, Gary. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just, and I'm also, I don't know if it's in the report or not, because I've not seen the report. But at some point in the report, there's got to be a, a, a way of looking at, you know, you, you may have a district out here that may be making 25 calls a year versus you may have another district that may be making 100 calls a year or 200 calls a year or whatever. You know, you got to look at those uh, those numbers as well to find out where the, the most need is. Well, that's kind of like schools, Gary. We're building a mall in the northern part of the county right now because that's where the education is needed. But we still got to teach people out here at Kitchell and Las Casas and Buckhannon, uh, regardless. You know, I'm talking about as far as prior time. You know, I'm, I'm talking about that too. Yeah. Just like uh, we were talking about uh, ambulances earlier. You know, we're going to just let these people out here burn? No. Oh, I'm not saying that. I mean, I, hey, you ain't got no bigger advocate up here. I, I, I was prioritizing the same way with ambulances as you are with fire. Well, I'm just saying, you can. You can look at this several different ways. Yeah. But that's why I want to look at it and I want to see this report. But I, but I, I will say this. I can't see giving it to somebody that's making 25 calls, giving a new one to somebody that's making 25 yeah. calls a year versus somebody that's making 100 or 200 mm -hmm. calls. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a process that you go down through. And I don't know how many calls anybody's making, you know, a year. I don't think it, we're going to be solved. That process isn't going to be solved here tonight. And it's no. not going to be solved at budget. It's going to occur afterwards, right. if for whatever money there may be. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I was just trying to yeah. you know, answer his question. Is this is when when the original budget was permitted here, uh, submitted here a couple of months ago? Um, the, where was the discussion on all this when all that was happening? Well, there was some discussion on it because it was a rescue truck and uh, what is it? We discussed a capital a outlay and one didn't exist then. Uh, and the mayor said it's getting worked on at this time. And I asked him and he said it's getting worked on at this time, but we don't have one right in hand yet. And but there is one now. There is yes. one now. It, that it, doesn't both of those do the same thing? I, I'm just, is, is the motion that we're working on Contrary to what <coughs> the, the, the current <coughs> fire rescue budget only has one vehicle in it. That's all we placed in there. $250,000 for a rescue truck slash it has, a, it has some water on it, I think. Uh, I thought it was just air. I, thought it was air. I don't That's know what's going on. Okay, but uh, rescue vehicle. Know. But in any event, all they're suggesting, and I knew, I mean, we had this suggestion. We do not have any information right now that tells us we can find six hundred and fifty thousand dollars without a tax increase but if we can and we can find it in a prudent efficient effective way I'm willing to put that back in there for discussion okay so they're asking us between now and June the 4th Lisa and I and Larry mostly Lisa and I to find out if there's any available funds in the development tax or ending fund balance of general fund that we could fund it. if it is we can present that to the budget committee for their consideration Okay. That's what this motion does. Yeah. We we just going to present something if we can possibly do it for their consideration uh, to include in the total budget as we go forward. Okay. Robert, I'm kind of hung up on the part about adding six hundred fifty thousand dollars to their budget, and I'd like to offer an amendment to the motion and just make it simply that the public safety committee uh, would like the budget committee at its next meeting on June fourth to prioritize the purchase of these two uh, vehicles. 
considering all of the available sources. Second. We've got a second. I just don't I, like I, putting I, anything without a time frame on there. Well, uh, you don't even know if it could go into the it has next no, budget that has no teeth. It can come from the development tax and be put in in July 15th after we get all of the figures in from what we actually have through the end of June. You know, because the, the development tax you can pull it from there and you can pull it. <coughs> so, to me, what he just said doesn't really make a lot of difference except because we still got June the 4th and what's going to be discussed to see if there is the money there. Well, the difference that it makes in my mind is that we're asking the Budget Committee to look and see if, the, if things are available, then we recommend that we do something with that. That, that, that's what it makes. We're not dictating that they spend six hundred fifty thousand dollars or whatever the case. Well, you, you, no matter what you do with that, you're not going to dictate to the budget committee that it's spent anyhow. You know they're going to they're going to go through the whole process. It gives them more flexibility yeah. and also more gives, options. Yeah, more options and also gives right. the, that department okay. more options too. To, I, I think so. Right. To me, it makes sense. Okay. Does everybody understand the? Impact? Amendment to the motion then. No, it was repeated. I have that the Public Safety Committee would like the Budget Committee at its meeting June 4 to prioritize the purchase of two vehicles considering funding sources. Prior, uh, in, in vehicles you need to specify fire well, engines or because a rescue truck is not a what I've been talking about. So fire engine a fire engine has water and a tank and a pump and a, and a rescue truck cuts people out of cars. <laughs> There's and they got a rescue truck in the budget because the county's never ever bought rescue trucks. It's the last two trucks they bought have been rescue trucks. They weren't those aren't the ones that are 15 years old. They're trying to buy them because they basically bought out the rescue squads. The f fire engines are the ones that are 25 years old and 15 years old. So that's kind of there is a difference. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't know. This is getting a little bit convoluted. Mm -hmm. Why don't this committee right here just make a request and ask the mayor, in consultation with the finance director, bring forth any reasonable recommendation they can to fund the purchase of two fire engines at a cost not to exceed fifty six hundred fifty thousand dollars to the uh, budget committee on June the fourth. I'll rescind my motion and go with that motion there. Okay. The better worded. And if that if that works. That's exactly what we've heard. We're saying the <laughs> well, no, it says, it says the mayor and the finance director okay. bring to. I mean, uh, you know, bring the budget, budget on June the fourth. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we've we that. Motion and a second on. Well, we got to get rid of the others. You rescinded I'll yours. Rescind you, well, we don't have an amendment. Then if we don't have a mo the first motion. We, you can't, you can't rescind the motion if there's an amendment on it. Okay. You rescind the amendment then. You can do that. Did and you have done. a second? Yeah. You okay. did. Are you going to are you going to make the amendment just what the mayor said? Yes. Well, we're going to make That's the what I'm going to do. We get everything one. rescinded. I'm going to go with this. It would cover everything. The, the, it would cover the original motion and the amendment both. I think it says the same thing. It just adds that money to it. I believe that uh, Commissioner yes. Stevens' amendment had. So. Did you include the 650 in there? Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Y
not rescind the original motion? No, because they amended it. And we're voting for the amendment now. Mm -hmm. So, any further discussion? If not, all in favor of the amendment? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Amendment passes, which, well, I guess that uh, we got to still vote on your motion. 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 motion as amended. Amended. That's the words I'm giving out. So, okay. all in favor of the motion as amended? Aye. Please. Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Give the chair. Aye. Appreciate you taking over, man. All right. I guess, do y'all have anything else that we will get before the hearing? Okay. All right. Thank y'all. Uh -huh. All right. Emergency management. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing? I'm doing uh, great. Uh, you, you should have a copy of uh, my report in front of you. Uh, uh, just want to highlight a few items here. We're currently working. We did receive uh, within the last month the uh, the monies for the 2013 Homeland Security <coughs> Grant, uh, and I did discuss that uh, some at the uh, last budget meeting. For those of you that are at the last budget meeting, that's when we got it. It actually came in, $140,000 for about three different projects. I don't have the details on the projects. If you need those, I can provide those later. Uh, on a second item there that I want to bring up is uh, just real quick, uh, we're still moving forward with the uh, Emergency Communications Tower Project update. Uh, the jail site is now ready for the microwave install and that should begin in the next week. Uh, we've also uh, located a couple of buildings. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but at these tower sites, you see always see these little rectangular buildings where all the stuff is, okay? Mm -hmm. Those are fairly portable, however, they're pretty expensive. Mr. Gurley has found a couple of them through his contacts that uh, will save us quite a bit of money. We have to pay to move them, but they won't cost us the thirty to sixty thousand dollars it takes to to build those. Things. They're, they're modular buildings. Yes. And be careful because to get electricity to them, they gotta have a they gotta have a sticker. Yes. He, he's so be careful on. Yes. Have to make sure to look at that. Yeah. That's right. I will. And if, well, then once you run into a problem, well, you buy some. I deal with it every day. <laughs> <laughs> Then we'll have a building for sale. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, also, uh, one of the things done, uh, we uh, received an estimate. I don't know if y'all uh, brought it up in this committee before. The Lynch Hill Road, where, where one of our tower, current towers is, the road is, to be nice, it's almost a road. It's, de it's degraded that far, and we got an estimate from the highway department for repairs of $11,600. And we've already presented that to, uh, to to budget. The reason why it didn't come to y'all first is because just the timing of when I received the estimate, and with it being toward the end of the budget year, the mayor worked with us to come up with the funds to uh, to fix that road. So we're moving ahead with that. Uh, we're coordinating in time when he can come up there. Availability of his equipment It's going to take about four days. They're going to put some crusher down uh, and get that thing looking like an actual road again. Um, uh, the, but that should happen here in the next month or so. Uh, something else that's not listed on there is uh, we're currently uh, putting, already removed the old dishes off the Hudson Road site, and we've got crews out there this week that are putting up the uh, the new dishes on the Hudson Road site. The light's yeah, working now out there, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. Work. <laughs> we got a light. <laughs> good. We're, we're bleaking. So, sure. and, and just to let you know, right now, as far as phase one of the project, uh, we don't see anything that's going to delay it at this point. Hudson Road. Is that off the old highway? Old Nashville Highway? Uh, so that runs in between Nashville. Panther Creek and Wattis Road. Middle. Yeah. Okay. I think Rockville it's the big big hill in between Rockville and Eagle. Sure I don't remember. That's the one we bought from uh, Mr. Carter. We leased it from Mr. Yeah. Carter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, just to let you know, the uh, we finished up the 2012 Homeland Security Grant. Uh, there's a $36,000. Uh, the, the District 5 called me about a month and a half ago and said we have extra monies and there was something I wanted in the 2014 grant which was a replacement sonar for the sort team <coughs> they uh, they denied it for the 2014 but then they called me back two days later and said we have extra monies in the 2012 can you make this happen so we managed to get get through that process and that's been delivered and we're just waiting on the reimbursement right now just to let you know. 
as far as any responses we've done, we've uh, we have uh, knock on wood been lucky. Uh, there's been just a couple of them. There's, there was an illegal burn that uh, the Walter Hill Fire Department uh, asked us to come out on because of what the next watch burning. And, let me ask a question. I, and this is just why do y'all respond to illegal burns? We only respond if a if a fire department wants us out there because of what's being burned, maybe it has materials, and we need to go out there and do the report to THEC. Okay, I was just thinking about that should be the fire department. But I... we're, 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 when first responders, we're never going to say no. We're not, we're, if they say they need us out there, we'll, we'll show up. Um, we also responded to a very, what ended up being a small spill. I think it was about 30 gallons of diesel fuel, a very, very small one. That was on the uh, 9th of May. And other than that, ladies and gentlemen, that's my report. Is there a motion on his report? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. And a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion is carried and we've got a budget amendment. I have two budget amendments here. The first one is, uh, as you see, should be the one to purchase the ReadyOps software. Um, I hate to give a lot of background on something, especially when I wasn't here when the background actually happened, but. I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with it, but the way what TEMA utilizes as well as mo every county in the, in the state utilizes to manage uh, uh, events, whether they be planned events or uh, emergency events, incidents, is something called WebEOC. Uh, it's a great software, it's expensive, and uh, the only person that has it in this county is my office, okay? Uh, about two, three years ago, I believe uh, the, the previous director looked into propagating it out, buying enough licenses for other municipalities within the county as well as other county offices because it's a great way to manage uh, from different sites what you're working on. It's, it's the planning, the ICS forms, the NIMS compliant ICS forms and such as that. Uh, but the, what was told to me was the cost was going to be well over $100,000. And the problem with that, in my mind, is, is all these softwares is, is once you spend that much money on one, you're married to it, okay? Well, this year, I, we looked at a few of them, and the, there's this one called ReadyOps Software that has been used for large events such as the Republican National Convention and other events of that nature and by other uh, major metropolitan areas. Uh, TEMA actually uses it as a backup system uh, up there uh, to communicate with. It only costs uh, a, a little more than a... Well, overall, it's going to cost me $9,000 to get in this system with 50 licenses for that first year. And uh, basically, the $3,000 is for the, uh, the licenses, and the, the recurring cost is only six grand a year. I know that sounds like a lot of money, but compared to, to WebEOC, with this initial cost of over, what it was, over $100,000 plus an $8,000 a year licensure fee, it, that was a lot. And this ReadyOps does a lot of what... WebEOC also does, and it's it's encrypted. It's easier to use with mobile devices, which is what most of your first responders got in their hand right now, and it's, it's something we like to try. And also, because I'm a cheapo, uh, I don't like being married to something forever. So if it's if it's if it's if it's something a little bit further down the road, we decide is no longer fitting our situation, we'd be a little more comfortable walking away from it. it to be honest with you, and as being part of I do with Tima. Is this part of what Tima, their Web EOC is now? No, this is not part of Web EOC, but they do utilize it as, but they don't use it to its full capability. They use mostly the communication features of it. Okay. Uh, and I can have the guy come in and do a, 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 a spill for you, such as that thing. It does make communications. You can create groups ahead of time where you can send out uh, text communications. Uh, you can, uh, like I said, you can do your ICS forms in the system. Uh, just about everything that we want to do, and so, it, to so me, that, it's so that if there's an event, that, that stuff has to be sent from the, the public safety entity to your to your office where it will go towards FEMA, then yes. towards FEMA. Now, yes, and and the only difficulty in this is that I, my my staff would have to take it and put it in the web web EOC, but that's I'm talking about cutting and pasting. That's not no big deal. What I would what I would want to do was have exactly what TEMA has right now, but I just think it's it's cost prohibitive. Why wouldn't the municipalities pay for it when they have their own EOCs? Well, to tell you the truth, some of the 50 licenses right now, I would like to give to them. 
and let, so that they can try it out with the intent of within the next year or two that I stop paying for theirs. But I get fit with the, with the initial bulk of it, I get 50 licenses anyway, which is more than what I would need at the county level. And, and, and really, uh, based on some of the stuff I'm seeing come down, is although I'm, I'm, I'm kind of old school and I prefer a face-to-face -face EOC, a hard point on the ground where we're looking at each other, okay, events are more and more being managed through virtual EOCs. And that's what this is, this is kind of that bridge over to that. So what will happen is, let's, let's say for example, uh, the, the tornado that hit Murfreesboro that day. Murfreesboro would have their EOC in operations, Rutherford County would have their EOC in operations. Murfreesboro EOC would, through this, would, would communicate if they're using it, if they're using it, I can see and, and interface with everything they're doing without them having to pick up the phone. And that way, they're not going to send somebody over as a liaison exactly. at, at that time. That's one of the advantages of it. So. No, actually, actually, that's one of the questions I asked the guy, and, and it works off Android and iPhone platforms, so there's, there's some platforms, and it is encrypted. Uh, and it's cloud-based, so it's, it's, it's all the latest bells and whistles. And when I watch the, the, it work, it, it works quickly. There's not a lot of lag, not a lot of delay. Uh, I was impressed. And the, the thing for me that was really easy is, is, is I'm not saying Web EOC is hard to learn how to use, but it does take some training. Oh, no. This system here, you almost need no training. And the reason why I think that's important is because people are going to utilize this when something happens. Then they're going to go, crap! How do you use this again? What you know? How did this work? What? what and it's real easy. It's pretty intuitive. Whereas, to be quite honest, Web EOC is just not. Uh, you have to know where you're going in that to, to make it happen. Can this get jammed easy or anyway? Not that I've been able to see because they've used it for. That's the reason I bring up things like these, these large political conventions, yeah. uh -huh. which have a lot of security built on top of it. That it's it's been the one of choice for there. Like I said, it's incredible. When you say 50 licenses, is that like per device or is that per? Agency that's using it per per uh, per person or per agency. Okay. Like I would give you know, uh, say say four to fire or whatever the case may be. Okay. We already started working up a list of who we, we might give the initial. And nothing says we can't get more licenses. And there and and as I understand it, those are fairly inexpensive on a year basis. I want to say it's on a couple hundred bucks. So let me ask you a question, just to sort of. Yes. It's six thousand three hundred twenty-three dollars. Mm -hmm. Is that a one-time expenditure or an annual expenditure? Uh, actually, the entire system to get in is $9,000. That's what I need to complete it for this budget year, uh, in addition to what else I have in processing equipment. Uh, but on an annual basis, it's $6,000. And I can work that in, not in the 2014 budget, but since I'm paying for it now, that'd be in, I'll work that into the 2015. So, so won't come, you won't need to ask for that money this next year? No. That you've already asked for? No. So we're buying it for 9000 but it costs us $6,000 a year? Yeah, because 3000 is your cost for your your uh, software and, and a couple of small hardware items that we can have. Can we opt out of that contract at any point we choose to? Yes, sir. So we're making a research investment here of $9,000 in an ongoing first-time expenditure of $6,000 to see if we can improve the ability to communicate during an emergency. And you found it in your budget? And he found it in his budget. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve. I second it. And the reason why I waited to this point, because this is my first budget year, and this is also goes to the other budget manager. The reason I waited to this point to ask is because I didn't create this budget, and this stuff came up right. a little bit earlier, and I was a little nervous about reallocating, not knowing whether I was going to finish a year strong or not. So That's understandable. All right, we got a motion and a second on the floor, and, and no reason, and there's no discussion, as I see. Well... <clears throat> Explain to me again the benefits of having this. Uh, you're saying you can intercommunicate if if the other agencies pick this up. If, if we ask them to use it and as easy it is to use, they will. Okay. So they may or may not opt to use it. So what's the benefits in the county agencies that you would be giving it to? Well, and, who like are, and who are they? Well, County Fire, SORT, yeah. Sheriff's Office, uh, Paws, Highway, 
all of those the school yeah, system they have they have a they have a point of contact over there for me to represent you got more than 50 right there to me well, well i'm not going to give out I, I mean not everyone in those agencies need a license and that's one of the things we'll work out yeah each one of them they, they may designate two people you know to be able to sign on this on the program where i understand it yes sir so during an actual emergency instead of calling our dispatch you would call it go through this system no this is uh, this is this is, this is more this is more in-depth coordination and planning to include written documents he he's familiar with some of the ics forms like your your what your instant action plan you can actually do this on the system and i can send it out to everybody that needs it uh, that's not something you can do through a radio dispatch these these are actual documents that have to be done and, and the reason why they're important by the way on the back end is these are the documents that fema looks at to reimburse you in case Right. It oh. comes to that. So it's it's a good way and usually you say, Well, what's the big deal on these forms? These forms generally, like the instant action plan, it's not one guy that does it. It's multiple people that have a play into it. So I'll send it over to, you know, Commissioner Young or, or, or whatever position he would hold and say, Hey, here's the initial IEP, add your part of it and get it back. It's it's getting all the players involved in the emergency at the same time to do their little piece of the puzzle finish the forms that yes. are required. And it's not just about the forms, she's an example, well, but it's overall co collaboration tool that, and it's very robust, it's, there's things you can do on it, like I just gave an example of, that you simply cannot do on a radio transmission. Well, the, the reason I'm questioning this is I sat through a, a spill out at the Sheriff's Department, basically the same thing, except it was geared to Sheriff's operations, but they also said that they could use this in other agencies here in the county. Is that not similar to what we're looking at, Chair? No? Different software, different software? We're looking at software. Well, we were talking about something else about software in the business sheriff's office. Oh, the CAD. We're talking about, yeah. The oh, CAD. Just, that's yeah. actually just regular dispatch information for everyday calls. This is what this Well, does. I thought we were overlapping. Yeah. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. No. So. What this does, let's say, for example, if the instant commander of a, of a major event, Needs shelter. He, the, the, the commander can actually, wherever that person's department is, someone with that department can actually be go on here. Say the Red Cross may be somebody that may may need this. They can go on there and start documenting the the the, the, the shelters and different things and, and sort of compiling information. That way, when everything comes down to it, everybody is piled into this with their documentation to be able to send it to FEMA to get reimbursements for the, the event. You're sending everything come live yes, sir. instead of picking up the phone and calling that questions every and, time and or picking up the radio and calling dispatch every time. And also, I'm also looking, although I, I would love to have everybody that we need to have represented in the EOC when we need them, I'm pretty sure that's not reality. It ain't. So that's why I'm looking for a solution like this. And I'm trying to find one that's inexpensive and that we don't have to get what I call getting married to. I, 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 I see the benefit. I appreciate it. I hate to say you use 50 licenses in Rutherford County alone without any municipalities. Well, like I said, I see this growing, but I do, I do, I agree with your point. We've already discussed that, that at some point, the, the, the other municipalities, because i got to get them on board as well. Whatever I do, they've got to, to do as well because there's very few emergencies that, I, that my office is going to be involved in that doesn't cross uh, municipal borders. They, they just will. So. It, it, could, it could cause us problems and not, us not get reimbursement for some incident or some situation if it's not documented in, when it's in yes. FEMA. It, it just, uh, it's a tool in the toolbox that will help us gain future... FEMA money in the end of a disaster. I mean, they, they literally document every chainsaw used, mm -hmm. and that those dollar right. amounts have to come. It has a value, dollar value to it, and Lincoln County, I think, just got denied on their tornado because it didn't. It didn't. And this is, this is going to, it's almost like, you know. The state had to do some, uh, and I don't know all the details, uh, but, but you're right. It didn't, it didn't even meet the requirements for a, a state-declared disaster. Right. And uh, so, but Lincoln County didn't have the money for the cleanup. No. And so the state uh, used TDOT, the National Guard, and some other T thing. TDEC. Uh, they uh, all came together and did the cleanup. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, but see, when you talk about having to do things like that, you got all these different agencies. If you had a place where you could put all the information and work through this, like I said, ideally, we'd have Web EOC at every level. But in a lot of ways, I like this better. This is more portable. Web EOC, essentially, if you ain't sitting in front of a PC, yeah. you're not on Web EOC. So. Is there any other questions on this? We got. A, is there a motion on the floor? Yeah. Okay. Is there any more questions or on, on the motion that's on the floor? All right. Call roll. Commissioner P. No. Commissioner Jeff Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Tiffany Phillips. Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Stevens. Yes. Commissioner Young. Yes. Commissioner Farley. Yes. On my uh, next amendment, the first line on that is to, to move uh, uh, some money, $3,100, to communications to pay our communications bills through the end of the year. Uh, I think I've got that fixed in next year's budget where I won't have to make that adjustment. But uh, that simply is coming from rentals where we, we're toward the end of the year and we don't need that in the rentals uh, budget. So that should get us through so we can meet our commitments there. Uh, the other piece of it is uh, is the $6,700 to communications equipment, line 708, bringing that out of uh, 320, which is dues and memberships, and 499, which is miscellaneous. We have a site on wheels, which is a mobile repeater communication site. It's on a platform, which is an old ambulance that was taken out of service. Uh, Y'all may have seen this thing around. What this does, the site on wheels does for us is when it's operational, is if we lose towers or if we are in a place where we need a repeater, we can pull up with that and, and utilize it for that purposes. What uh, Mr. Gurley and I have discussed is we need to move that off of that ambulance platform onto a trailer. It's, it'll be cheaper in the long run for its maintenance. It's, it's, it, it'll be easier in some cases to even maneuver it. So that's what the $6,700 is for, is to get us a trailer so that we can move the sow off of that old ambulance and make a couple of small repairs to it and make it easier to utilize. Because when you set these up, it's not like you put people in them. You set them up, you get them started, you check on it every once in a while to make sure it's got fuel and that's about it. But I want to get it off that old ambulance. And that's what I'm asking for. And again, I waited to the end of the year to make sure that we could afford to do this very thing. Well, I'm, I'm with you. I, the state, we've used, utilized the state sow mm -hmm. uh, for the air show, and uh, we utilized the uh, counties. And the problem is with the counties, if it that truck breaks down, you're either going to tow it to where you need to tow it to to set the sow <laughs> up. Um, but the trailer to me, you know, and you're doing it within your budget, so I'll make a motion to approve. All right, we got a motion. Is there a second? And there's a second. Discussion. Is this a covered trailer? Yes, sir, it is. Any more discussion? Hearing or seeing none, call the roll. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Jeff Phillips. Aye. Commissioner Tiffany Phillips. Yes. Commissioner Schaefer. Yes. Commissioner Stevens. Yes. Commissioner Young. Yes. Commissioner Farley. Yes. That's it. That's it. Right. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Uh, Sheriff Department, you're, you're halfway through the alphabet and you're first every time. Even so, he's passed. How y'all doing? Good, how are you doing? Good. 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 Let's see, which one y'all want to do first? Let me get her copy first. Oh. All right. Uh, just start, we'll start off number one with it. First line says 54 and 10 307. Oh, the budget amendment? Yes. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, I, I just, I'm trying to figure out which one the, the report or which one. Okay. Uh, so it's end of the year. Um, I'm trying to start moving things around. So uh, I'm sorry, which one on the budget yeah. amendment? Uh, the, what is 307 communication? Yeah, one says 307 okay. right. for the first, first line item there. Okay. So, um, we're needing funds in other lines, so we're going to pull out uh, 70000 out of our communication line item on the sheriff's office side, 10000 in the jury expense, and 20000 for gasoline. 
we need, I've been talking about needing money for food, so we're going to put uh, 60000 out into the food, and then we are uh, short on our utilities, about 40000 we're going to put that in to the utilities line up. I need to, uh, I need funds for part-time salaries. Uh, we're way ahead on the dispatcher's salaries line item, uh, so I just want to move the money out of there. Uh, some of the part-time salaries are to handle some shortages that we've got um, in the dispatch department, so uh, that's why we're moving that money to the other line item. We're going to recognize, on uh, number three, we want to recognize revenue from donations, uh, put those into our other charges and other contracts line item, still on the sheriff's office side. We've uh, recycled some material, so we had income from that of uh, $1,980. We'd like to put those funds into building improvement into our other supplies line item, and that will all be on the jail side budget, as noted. On the next page, number five, uh, we have revenue that's come in. We're uh, doing a cold case seminar, and so that those funds are starting to come in now, and so we'd like to put that in our in-service training line item, recognize that, uh, recognize that income. Uh, number six is where we have had uh, uh, sale of materials, and we'd like uh, $1,984. We want to put that in our other supplies line item, which is basically for scan and for office supplies, which is where those funds originally were pulled from. Um, and then the last item, you want to recognize revenue, uh, just a, another other revenue line item, it was for some uh, storage fees that were uh, paid to the county. And uh, we're going to put that in our building improvements line item. On the, on the jail side. Then on the last page is uh, a list that was sent uh, by Budget Finance to uh, balance out all of the uh, payroll and line items for the for the uh, year. Since this was a different pay plan, the first year of the different pay plan, yeah. you know, sign you put forth last year. So they're they're just going through and rebalancing all that. This is something that Lisa came up with. As y'all have heard the request and the reasons why, is there a motion to that effect? If the <coughs> salaries are, you're just moving money around? Yes, sir. Yeah, there's no new funds there. This has nothing to do with the Sheriff's Department's recommendation on uh, pay, the pay plan? No. Mm -hmm. Are you moving funds between jail and patrol? Uh, we are on, uh, well, let's see, hang on, I don't think so. <coughs> Which one? Yeah, but that's that's an income, and then we're putting in, that's where we recycle materials. Mm, no. no, I don't think no. so. No. Okay. No, well, hang on. Yes, I am. Let me take that back. Uh, the very first line item where we're, we're pulling from the uh, the first three items, we are going from the sheriff's office line and putting that into the jail for food and utilities. That's the only one. I just didn't recall us doing that in the past. That's why I was yeah. asking that. Yeah. So. Okay. Do we need to separate that from the others, or can we take them all at once? You can take them all at once. Okay. And, and I will note before, I'm sorry, for you, motion if you don't mind. I, I will note on the very first line out, 307, which is communication, the reason there is funding left over is because when we originally budgeted the funds for that for this year, that included all of our equipment being turned on for the entire year. Uh, we had equipment that was not turned on for a period of time because the units were not installed in the vehicles, all the NDTs and the, the, the uh, rocket motors and stuff like that. And so those are now on, but they've only been on for half a year. That's why you see such an amount of money left over. And so uh, our, current, um, our current billing on a monthly basis right now is about $30,000 a month going into the next budget year. Any more, Sorry. Dis Sorry to Any more discussion? I'll make a motion to we approve the budget amendment. All right, there's a motion. Is there a second? And a second. Our discussion? Hearing or seeing none. Call roll. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Jeff Phillips? Aye. Commissioner Tiffany Phillips? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Stevens? Yes. Commissioner Young? Yes. Commissioner Farley? Yes. 
other than that, we have the uh, department budget uh, uh, reports. I'm sorry. I guess it's getting down here to the. There's not a whole lot left. No what lot. is yeah. 54 140 salary supplement? That's a state that? supplement for each officer. Actually, it's been paid out. Uh, it says it's 100% there, but uh, Lisa Nolan paid that out last Friday on all of oh, our okay. checks. It's for the certified officers. State of Tennessee gives us roughly $600. $600. And they get firemen get the same thing every year. Okay. It's to meet certain training requirements yeah. that. So we get our 40 hours in service. Yeah, and if, you, okay. if you meet the training, you. We budget for it. And then we wait till the state <coughs> pays it back. It's a pass through. Yeah, it's a pass through. And it, and it always happens in May, May June. Yeah. If you anybody got any questions on the on the report there and stuff, I, whenever y'all ready, I'll turn a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the report. Second. Got a motion to approve the report. Is there a second? And a second. All right. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. I get one. Wait. Bad I think it's Becky. I'm not sure there was one in her packet. So. And I believe Can we get everybody. Okay. And he's got an extra set, so that'll be for Commissioner Farley. Yeah, okay. Sorry. That's all we have. That's all I have. All right. Anybody else have anything else on? Good. That's it. All right. Thank y'all. See you next month. Thank you for your time. All right. Is um. Is there any other business come for the committee? I just want to say thank y'all to y'all for putting up with me tonight and listening and I appreciate y'all's support down there and coming up with something for the mayor to move forward to. We actually I'll rant and rave a lot, but we got something accomplished and maybe budget can figure something out from there. I and mean, I want to concur with uh, with Matt also. I mean you can't be in the firefighting business without being passionate. So you know and that's what was tonight's passion. Most of us are. <laughs> so, but um, if there's no other business come for the committee, we stand in there and thank y'all.